paranormal Karen. She's so spooky. Paranormal Karen. Funny too. Paranormal Karen. She's so spooky. Oh, and did I mention she's funny too? Yeah. Cha cha cha. All right, everybody. Welcome to Paranormal Karen. It is, uh, we are in July and all of my prediction podcasts are coming up, which means I get the pleasure of speaking with Ryan from Ryan's Astrology that you all love and know. And Ryan, we are going to jump right in because uh, life is as complicated as trying to make a phone call on a Discord server, isn't it? Oh, my God. We really did just go through that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait till you hear how sexy you sound, though. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's such a funny. Oh, good. <laughs> um, all right. I'll my take friend. it. First of all, how are you? We didn't even get to say how are you because we were waiting for things to connect and plug in and ring. How are you doing? <laughs> I know. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm feeling like there's such a like element of transition. We had these like crazy eclipses that we're coming out of now. I mean, we're out of them. Eclipse season's over, I guess. Um, but that was wild. I feel like <laughs> a lot of uh, just a lot of crazy changes taking place in a lot of people's lives. I feel like <laughs> this has been a wild year. It really has been. Yes, it has. And you know what? I feel like I have a different appreciation for things, but I'm not happy mm. and this is weird because i know like gratitude and happiness two different things right and um so in my weirdness of my life i see my parents every day and i feel very happy to do that because they're deteriorating very quickly and so i go every day and that's great but i still can't find happy or content content yeah. but anyways it's not about me it's about what's coming up ryan this year is a <sighs> roller coaster and you've been so right on all the time with everything from birds to there was something else that you and i are constantly um going back and forth on i'm just gonna let you talk where do we begin well, isn't that weird? The bird thing. I know. It's like I, I keep seeing bird stuff. <laughs> Birds Everywhere. are going crazy. Um, yeah. it's uh, This is weird because I feel like a lot of the major, by the time this is coming out, a lot of the major planetary shifts will have happened. Um, there's not a whole lot else that's going to actually change this uh. year um, or for the rest of the year. We're dealing with retrogrades, like there was a big retrograde free period in the first half of the year, like three months, nothing retrograde, um, which is excellent. But it was also like people like by the end of that, it was like everybody was burnt out. Like you're just in overdrive, you know, it's like a snowball going down a hill. So now we've got retrogrades the rest of the year, um, which is a, a healthy amount of retrogrades, I would say, aside from like there's this one very important time, um, which actually it was, we're going to be in the midst of it. I think right when this comes out. <laughs> wow. Um, okay. And and just for anybody that maybe hasn't heard you on my podcast or, or doesn't know about astrology, retrograde is when it appears a planet oh. is going backwards, right? Yeah. I just talked about this with someone else too. Um, and I feel like the best way I can like make sense of it is, is it's like that it's an optical illusion. And so it's, it's not really moving backwards. Planets don't do that, but it's sort of like when you're on a treadmill and then you get off and the room looks like it's moving kind of funny. Like you, you're like moving forward, but the room looks like strange. Do you know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. It's, it's just that weird thing. Like you're like, why is the room moving? Like I, am I moving qu really quickly? And like, I'm just, it's just a weird disorienting thing. Um, so it looks like Mercury or any planet is moving backwards in the sky, but they're really not, but it's an internalized energy retrograde meaning again, so from our perspective on Earth, it's backing up over a part of the sky that it was just moving forward through. So it's kind of like a revisitation energy with retrogrades. So it's good. Like, basically meaning, like, for the second half of this year, I don't feel like we're going to be dealing with tons of shakeups, new <laughs> moves happening, you know? Um, I think it's, like, kind of, okay, we're, like, wrapping up some storylines here. Um, I think my big one... Uh, it's, it's mainly that Pluto is m dipping back to Capricorn. It's in. It's going to be back into Capricorn when this is out. Um, oh, it, it had a little stint in Aquarius this year from March 23rd through June 11th. 
Um, but June 11th, it, it retrograded back to Capricorn, where it stays for the rest of the year. But it's been in Capricorn for the past 15 years. So that's like really, it's this kind of like final grasp for power mm. um, and making sure that we um, are <laughs> handling our stuff. Like right before it went into Aquarius, seriously, like right before it went into Aquarius is when, um, oh God, now I came the Silicon Valley Bank stuff happened um, um and it was just like it was just like go freaking figure like when it when pluto entered capricorn it was the economic collapse you know mm-hmm. 2007 2008 like just like immediately um and now it's like it's like oh so the last 15 years what have what have we learned with the economy because capricorn has so much to do with that it's these big structures that hold up society um our institutions including banks you know um and yeah. so it's so poetic to me that like literally it was like the day Capricorn, it was like leaving Capricorn, I think is when that happened. Um, and so it was like, let me just like show you, you know, have you learned your lessons or are we still like messing around <laughs> with <laughs> capitalism too much? Like it's just what it's a freaky energy. You know, somebody on TikTok said something great, which I'm so I know TikTok is bad, but it's the only place I feel like we really have free speech. And even then they they mm-hmm. kind of knock you down a couple of times. But somebody said, if capitalism is so great, why does it have to be bailed out by socialism every four years? Which is interesting. Like there's a halfway point here, folks, where we could do better. When you say not a lot of things are changing, I can't believe that that actually disappointed me more than you saying everything's going to change because i feel oh, like man. well we're stuck. i know I, like i feel very stuck i feel like the whole country is very stuck like no one's budging ah uh, oh yeah 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 well so that's where i just i guess i mean like i wouldn't be too worried for the most part of just all these new undertakings starting to like also pile on right now i think the stuck energy, I don't think we're going to feel stuck. I think there is this, like, okay, healthy kind of moving back, take a step back. What What's, like, why are we stuck, right? If we're mm-hmm. stuck, we're at a roadblock or something. So, like, let's get a, like, better view of the picture, the current landscape, you know? Um, and then we'll move forward. In 2024, we're moving forward um, in a big, big way. Uh, but, but, yeah, the second half of this year, truly, like, that's probably my overarching theme is just sort of like, okay, the, the planets have shifted. Very significant shifts have uh, occurred in the first half of this year, but we're still adjusting. A lot of them have just transpired, too. Um, and so the second half is, I think, us trying to, like, find a rhythm, figure out, like, what what truly needs to, like, fall away, what doesn't. I'm, like, thinking, like, like one, just as an example, okay, Um it's really because we're you will deal with new themes, but these aren't actually that new. Like I've been dealing with this for a minute now. Mm-hmm. Like Aquarius, you know, Aquarius, which is where Pluto moved into. It left Capricorn March twenty third, moved into Aquarius, and ju- until June eleventh, uh, basically like clockwork. It was like at that point, like all of my friends, Pluto kills things off. It was like all of my friends just like stopped texting me to hang out. <laughs> wow, I'm like I had a massive this, loner. I Ryan, I. Literally, the beginning of this year, I know that's a different time, but I was like, I reach out to everyone. And I was like, I'm going to mm-hmm. wait and see who reaches out to me. And it was very slim number of people. I was very like, whoa. Yeah. Like, you were, were you kind of surprised by some friends that like didn't go, hey, are you all right? Um, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Like I've truthfully, like, just like, I, I haven't even seen them in like a couple weeks now. Mm-hmm. Um, like, and these are people that I was with like every single night, like, and, and the, I, and the weird that they're all still out, you know, <laughs> and I'm, I'm comfortable talking about this because they're never going to listen to this. And that's right. another, it's just another thing like, like Aquarius rules community support. Like they're my friends. They're my going out friends. They're my, they're my friends. You know, they, they have like a meaning for me, but they're not like spiritual. They're not uh, astrological. They don't care about about this stuff really mm-hmm. and so i never talk about it with them anyway and it did always bug me so now go figure pluto is permanent change and it's going to purge whatever is not working in your life so oh. i think it's really interesting that we've we got this teaser of pluto and aquarius you know and dealing with that literally just until june 11th but then it backtracks to capricorn and i think we kind of i don't know like i mean i didn't deal with these issues 
at and that people point, know so I'll we're probably taping, be going back. Yeah, yeah, people know we're taping this ahead. You know, I came to a really um, earlier this year. So, so I know we're in July, even though we're talking about June. It's mm-hmm. okay. It's all it's right. all relevant. But it matters. It matters. Yeah, it really matters. <laughs> yeah. I when I was looking at my workload, which my I'm really trying to find that place of joy. Like, what do I do that brings me joy every day? What is that? And whether it's artwork or whatever. And I said I was looking because I love my patreon i love my podcast i love my comedy i love my tarot i was like something's gonna go this year and i don't know which one it is and i like i go i had to stop thinking about it because all of my things that i do feed each other so i was like okay exactly what you're saying i was like the universe is going to take away whichever one needs to go yeah, 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 yeah. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't force it. I would, I would kind of like let it happen. And like truly, because if you deny Pluto, Pluto's gonna like rear its ugly head into your physical reality <laughs> and like force that thing to leave. So yeah, you know, and especially just knowing like, you know, it's back, it's going back to Capricorn the rest of this year. So this Aquarius theme of like, like what you're talking about is Aquarius stuff too. It's like that social network stuff. Um, oh, is that also, it's so, funny that you said that about Pluto. So Pluto is the tower card. Uh Oh, is oh, it? Well, it, I, you know what it might be. Actually, I could look that up, but I, mean, I, don't, I meant in a way where it's like the universe is like, no, you're done with that. Kaboom. That's the tower. It probably oh, is. Oh, yeah, yeah, or Uranus. Now oh. I'm thinking it's wrong. I never really pay attention too much to the astrological I don't, correlation I just, with tarot. I just did a class on it, and I it just, just kind of skimmed it. But yes, okay, anyways, that's all right. Uh, it's the same feeling. Of, no, yeah. You're done with yeah, that, whether oh, you think yeah. so or not. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And Pluto is so slow, like it won't be back here at, at these points where it's at now in our lifetime ever again. It takes 250 years to go through the Zodiac. So it literally equates to permanent change. Um, but it's like we just got this teaser of it. of And that teaser, you know, like March to June is going to be a much bigger theme in 2024. Um, and honestly, for the next 20 years. Um, and then... The rest of this year, though, is sort of like asking you to reflect back prior to March. And honestly, even the the whole 15 years prior. It's really strange how some of this stuff is cycling back. I have like a best friend who 15 years ago moved um, to Las Vegas. And, you know, for the last like seven and a half years, she's lived in L.A. And she's up and leaving June 12th, wow. June 12th, right after she's going back to Vegas 15 years later. It's like, go, like that is like the like weird repeating theme. So literally think about what were you doing? Like 2007, 2008, what were you doing? Where were you? Um, what, like what has transpired in your life since then? Because the second half of this year is a huge reverberation of that that like point in your life but then everything that's transpired since then it's like everything's up for review right now you know i i dream of going back to la but i'm not sure that's where i'm going i can't get uh, that's something that right now i feel like and this may be why when you were saying change like i feel so unsettled now my friend isn't in nashville so i don't think i'm going to nashville either i don't know where i'm going but you know it's so funny because Mm. i have to this this sounds like a bad thing, but I'm like kind of okay with it and I get it. But it's so funny what you're talking about because there's the clubs out here won't book me because number one, they don't like women. And number two, they don't like older women. They have told men that they're too (sighs) old. Like it's really, so they're bringing in YouTubers and younger people, which, you know, uh, I, uh, they're making money. So whatever, however they do it, they do it. You know, I have no lack of work, which is great, but uh, my heart was a little bit broken when I used to do every Halloween at Zany's, we would do the psychic stand up. I would get the best taste. I remember. Right. People coming in, to see me finally filling the room and they got a new booker and she got rid of everybody everybody was too Ugh. old everybody was too and like it kind of in a way my heart was broken because that was my favorite week of the year of course it filled up and flap at uh, flappers like in a second they were like of course of course come back but i um i was like there's a big transition right now where everyone is getting rid of the style 
I'm going to say stand-up comedy, and they're bringing in more of the YouTube comedy, which, you know what, they'll be, uh, then I, and, and then it'll be even weirder, my book, my year is booked. I've never had my year booked this early, and 2024 is filling up, so mm. everybody's splitting. It's not a terrible thing, but it did for that minute. They did it in a really sneaky way. They cleared out everybody, and it was like, really? Uh, you know, it just kind of broke my heart, but onward and upward, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, 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 yes. I know. And it's, it's there's that weird bittersweet thing of like like something's got to change right now, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I'll. I mean, really, I don't. I feel like I don't know anybody who's not going through some level of a, a change, like a, that feels very significant right now. Um, so yeah, I mean, like it's going to depend on on your personal birth chart, of course. But this is more like collective mundane astrology. So I just want to like kind of say that, like, that's pretty much the backdrop of this year in my mind is really this like recap, reflection, overview. Like people are really, it's not even, it's like, I don't know, it's not nostalgic though either. I'm not like fondly looking back on where I was in 2007, 2008. I'm, but I'm getting these weird reminders of that. Time and just everything that I've done and like these, it's Capricorn, so it's structure, right? Like mm. these things have given me bones to stand like tall on, and now it's like these things are disintegrating, and I've got to like find like my way. <laughs> I got to like hobble somewhere else or something. Yes, everything. You know, and that's a great way to say it, Ryan. And I'm gonna poise a question, a cliffhanger, and then we're gonna go to a commercial. So um, there is just. Maybe this is just change, but there is just an uncomfortableness. Like, I know uh, I'm with my parents and they have limited time, or I'm living in this place that for a limited time, I don't want to buy anything because I'm in a limited, like everything feels like it's on a limited time. And I feel like even people that have like their house and their kids and they know what they're doing, they also feel like, wait, I can't, whatever this is, when is it going to finish? So we're going to take a break and hopefully you can answer that or I can word it better on the other side. Medicallyspeaking.com is a prophetic shop that focuses on your inner alchemical transmutation. And I needed an alchemical transmutation to say alchemical transmutation. See, Toria, you did it. When you're looking for activations to change your aura, wisdom and insight to heal your past, and alchemy to live your highest vibrancy, you will most certainly enjoy the array of offerings you will find at hermeticallyspeaking.com. Created through the teaching of the Hermetics, Toria, who's been on my podcast many times, provides personalized guidance that caters a feast specifically from the higher realms to you. You'll leave each session feeling empowered and loved, having gained ancient knowledge for your soul's nourishment and growth. Believe me, I know I've worked with Toria and she is terrific. Everything you need is within you. So come remember, activate and expand your knowing at hermeticallyspeaking.com. Okay. So when Ryan, are we going to feel like we're not waiting anymore or we have arrived? Cause neither, I have neither of those feelings. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, two, two, two things with that. I mean, different things there. I, we're not waiting, um, really starting 2024. There's like, by that point, Pluto is going to be firmly in Aquarius where it will stay for the next 20 years. Aside from a very little brief dip at the end of 2024, it will retrograde back to Capricorn, but only for like two months. It's very quick. Um, but, but that could be significant. Um, But anyway, like, that will be a very big time of change. Like, so many people are going to be fundamentally, like, reforming, like, the direction of their lives. And Aquarius is the future forward sign. So it's everybody's going to be having their gaze on that, like, like, what's what's my next five steps, my next five years, whatever. Um, That's the next year. Uh, This is not, but, you know, in order to, like, do that, like, we we should all want to do that in, like, the way that's going to be best for us, right? And I Mm -hmm. feel like I don't feel ready. (laughs) No, I don't. I want to. I want to, but I, I need. I, I need the rest of this year to like really sort some things out to figure out what am I doing. You're much more patient than I because I, I mean, I know I'm trying to stay in the moment. Which, by the way, staying in the moment, you can manifest things so fast right now. But I can't seem to do it. Like I can't. Mm-hmm. I mean, time is really weird right now. It just is. Um, you know, it's uh-huh. funny. I was trying to put, I never taped it, but I was trying to put this thing on 
uh, Instagram and TikTok about how everybody's talking about the aliens are coming in 2027. You just wait for 2027. And I'm like, I can't get the low tire light to go off in my car. Never mind worry about an alien invasion of 2027. Is oh that, God. is that a, I mean, I know it's far away, but is, is everybody like, does that make sense that 2027 is some sort of a huger shift? Do you know, this is so fascinating to me. I love this conversation. Um, I mean, by that point, you know, Pluto's well into Aquarius and Aquarius rules aliens. Um, and it, uh, it's, it, yes, it makes sense. Like, it, I'm, it's so funny because, like, you know, I just launched my own podcast and they, we had this human design expert on and there's, in the, in the human design <laughs> realm they they think there's this thing i forgot what it's exactly called but something 2027 where they basically think like it's this huge expansion of human consciousness and um i can't like really identify the astrology of it i can a little like that's going to be uranus moving into gemini which is huge uranus is the planet of like epiphanies and innovation and like quantum jumping you know and gemini is like a, a very perceptive open-minded solutions oriented sign so I can see that, like, and it rules the, the mind. So I could literally see that consciousness itself um, will be expanding in a very, like, sudden way. Last time Uranus was in Aquarius, uh, it correlated to, like, uh, the spread of information. Um, like, people just... It was like 80 years ago. And um, God, now I'm forgetting what exactly it was that was invented. But that's a big thing with Uranus. TV or paper. Well, paper. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. It was like, yeah, there was like media, which is very Gemini. um, And something related to media. God, I cannot remember. Maybe it was maybe it was radio. 80 years ago? But um, it couldn't be the internet, right? Like the first... No. Yeah. no, 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 no. The internet's in its Saturn return. <laughs> I'm, a, um, I'm 150 years. years old. That's why I think no, I know, the but internet they, but was This 80. is like proving your, <laughs> it's proving your point about time, to be honest, right? of like, what to, what decade am I in right now? Um, uh, honestly, I, it might have been the first, like, broadcast, like that, like, that program where they, it was like a fake alien invasion. I think that's what it was. Oh, War, Remember War, that? War of the Worlds? Let me click was that that in. it? That was the that uh, was the radio show that freaked everyone out. Let's see. Uh, yeah. When was that? Date. Hold on. Was it like 80 years ago? Date of war. Of it was 1938. The... Okay. Date of war um, of the world's radio show. I better say that or I'll get all kinds of Tom Cruise stuff. Okay. Uh, uh 1898? No. 1938. No, no, no. Over CBS uh, Radio. Yeah. Okay. So that okay. is a little so, over under a little under 80 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it might literally correlate yeah. to that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So also, you know what else that probably is very interesting about is that may have been the first time people went, hey, they're lying to us. You know? Yeah, I mean? right? yeah. <laughs> like Yes, <laughs> and it's, yeah. That's kind of weird. That's perfect. Yeah, I perfect. mean, and now no, everybody's like, totally. they're lying to us all the time. <laughs> hmm And there's like, I know, I feel like anybody listening to this, if you didn't listen to the last one you and I did together, I, that really, like, I know we went into so many different historical things of like the energy, because so much energy shifted in the first half of this year. And I wanted to relate it back through history. So I know we reference a lot. It, that might be a really good reference point. Just like refresh on what those themes were, because this second half of the year, we're literally just kind of like revisiting that in new ways. And I, mean, I think it would help a lot. Um, but I remember in that saying that Neptune was, I mean, it, it's got a huge role in the plane right now. Um, and, and in the next few years, really leading into 2027, weirdly. Um, and, like Neptune is associated with mass panic. I feel like Neptune was even involved with the War, War of the Worlds thing because it literally caused mass panic mm-hmm. um, and, and and deception. Right, the lies that like the the like it, is this real? Is this not? Like blending of and not even and, intentional, but it was a time to learn about skepticism of what you were listening to. Uh huh. 
Uh huh. I think like so. Um, I'm totally not even trying to plug my podcast right now, but like I love no, you, brought up the that, No, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> we get. I'll save it for the end. But like the, I, this human design person I had on was so fascinating because we brought up this like human designs. Like it, I love it, but they have some wacky stuff that I'm like I don't know if I can get on board with this. She put it into context for me that I was like, oh my god, I love your brain. Um, where in twenty like in 2027 they think that like our pets won't need us anymore. <laughs> like, oh. they literally think, like, we're not going to have pets. And I'm like, what does that mean? Like, how, what do you, what, our, our dogs are just going to, like, walk away from us? <laughs> like, what do you mean? It's, like, bizarre. And she was basically saying, like, she did, like, really a lot of research into this. And because we sent her that question in advance. And she was basically saying, like, think of it through history. Like, we had to train these animals for you know and we needed them for all sorts of like emotional support reasons and and to then plow she was, like, fields related. and stuff like that yeah 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 and um she was basically saying like it is a shift in human consciousness and she's like it's not so much that like like we rely on these animals for like emotional support in many instances yes. now like that's basically what they are and and it lines up with the astrology. She put it in some different contexts, but basically we're coming into this very big period starting this July, by the way. Mm. So th- we're getting back into this year, I promise. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, it's like, there's this huge uh, focus on the self individuation um, autonomy, like not needing other people basically. So I think that's really interesting. Um, and, and it sucks because it's like in a way, cause it's like, well, relationships are awesome. Friends are awesome. Right? Like, why are my friends falling away? I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to be a loner for the rest of my life, but like, right. you know, I, I don't think I will be, but there is this, this, ele- this like thing that's pushing people into a greater sense of, um, needing to like, be independent. Right I now. I literally I st- I've always you know even the hermit is my identification in um uh mm. human design, but I've always seen myself as the hermit even to the point of like I don't know where I'm living and I may drive around for a year. But it's funny that you say that, but I d- it's I'm not getting a dog. I uh, maybe I'll get a dog after September. I hope we can still have dogs. But I I was uh taking a class from my original tarot teacher on uh other stuff and she said that the animals only have so many chakras they don't have the same they can't um i can't remember how she said it but they um like they can't she was saying they can't calculate or compute or something like we can which is kind of opposite from animal communicator stuff but she it was very interesting and when you were saying that i was thinking i wonder if they're going to get the same chakras as us so that they are not taking care of us but they can be like a friend that you Except wouldn't that, be codependent with that you are crushing it yes that's literally like basically what my co-host brought up she was like okay so instead of just like like dumping all of our emotions onto these little beings that like we like have domesticated and whatever like now we're are we gonna basically switch it around a little bit and be like wait what can i do for you you know like like what can i do for you dog besides um, giving them more food than they should have yes (laughs) <laughs> yeah, like a healthy, yeah, interdependence, right? I know I've said that multiple times, I feel like, on your podcast. But that really is what we're moving into. So I yeah. guess I could just say that, like, July, for what that's worth, were the North Node, um, which is a, a kind of like an a, a, if the, where the sun and moon would be crossing paths. It's like an eclipse point. It's where the eclipses are happening. So there's a North Node and a South Node, because we get two eclipses every six months. Um, and they basically they're moving into, uh, Aries and Libra North node, which is what we're moving into trying to incorporate more of it is, which is naturally difficult to embrace it because it's like your life purpose in a sense, uh, or our collective purpose. Um, and it's like growth, right? Mm-hmm. Growth comes with growing pains. So it's it's naturally difficult. But then there's the south node in Libra, sign of partnership. Aries, sign of the individual. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac, right? Mm-hmm. So opposite that is the sign in the middle of the zodiac, halfway through. It's the the sign of the other. So there's this release of the concept of the other and a need to embrace more independence um, and like a responsibility for the self. In a whole new way. And I think it's it's 
doubly so with the fact that for the rest of this year, Pluto is going to be back in Capricorn. Because Capricorn is an incredibly independent sign. It will take responsibility for itself. Um, so I think that there's just this big need for everybody to kind of feel like I am responsible for what happens to me, you know? Um, it's interesting. And I feel like the narrative, right, of like, you know, y- your emotions are valid, right? But like, um, how you respond. Like if somebody says something to trigger you or get, like if you respond from that emotional space, you might lash out at them or whatever. That's on you, you know? Mm-hmm. Like it's that sort of like ability to just take responsibility. It doesn't mean that person... Was right. Was right. Yes. Yeah. You know, that's so funny. This is everything I've been working on. And by the way, please plug your podcast at every turn. Um, You're here because you're one of my favorites. The, um, I, in the card of the day, I just taped one that was about what you want in a relationship. Where did you place those other, uh, those emotions? Like, uh, did, like, like comedy is the worst mistress ever. Am I looking for acceptance from comedy? I better not be that kind of thing. But also it's funny because I know this sounds so silly, but probably some people can agree. Um, Monogamy is going away. That's what they say. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I'm that advanced. And also maybe if I had 10 handsome men that wanted to sleep with me, I would say no monogamy, but I I'm having trouble with one. <laughs> oh my god, I know, right? Jesus. Right? So we don't want to get it's hard out there. <laughs> right. I know. What well, and then I think it's that concept. I maybe it's just like releasing some of that element of like I need a one um yes. like cuz I don't think I think it's like how do we be more at peace with like the potential of never having anybody you know like how do we just then live a happy healthy life on our own like if if we must if we must you know it doesn't mean that we need to manifest that for ourselves or anything or that 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 we have to and it doesn't even make sense to either like um i think typically where the south node is which will be in libra and this is going to be for a year and a half the nodes stay in uh axis like this for a year and a half at a time so until january 2025 for like a lot of relationships are going to fall apart if they've been built on something that is like too traditional. Right. Um, and like when Pluto was in Libra, you know, Pluto kills things off. That was like basically Gen X. And that was when divorce rates skyrocketed. It's the sign of marriage. Like Pluto kills things off. So divorce all of a sudden, that was like a the generation of divorce. So we can kind of expect that similar notion of like, we need to release these outdated concepts of what relationship is that could include monogamy, but I don't think it will, to be honest. I think that monogamy is always going to be a thing. I know there's like kind of a, yeah, a choice and it works for people. It's like, I think more than that, even it's more about the element of like, wait, but one partner, multiple partners, doesn't matter. Am I someone who can commit? Am I someone who can be responsible for one or more people like can I like what does that even mean you know um like how do we how do we partner in general even with friends you know like it can be platonic stuff business partnerships just that concept of how we relate to each other like obviously we treat each other like crap (laughs) right we do so plus you know what else is that my I'm hoping this feels different Like, you know what I mean? Like uh, things feeling different. Like maybe you're right. Like maybe, uh, and I, you know, I don't know. I, all right, I'm gonna leave that open. You know, it's so funny because even talking about being triggered, I feel like probably people that are listening to this podcast and maybe I'm wrong on this or maybe I have a huge ego, but I find that those of us that are in the field of, shall we say, um, self-improvement or astrology or tarot, um, I feel I just went through this thing where all of a sudden it's almost like every bad thing anyone ever said to me or triggered me with started looping in my head. And then I made a list of it and why it bothered me. And then I realized I was those people. In other words, the woman that picked on my looks all the time in Hollywood or made fun of my when I wanted to grow my hair gray when I was there that really sat me down and gave me a talking to about it. That's what I do to me. So why would I get mad at her? Do you know what I mean? Like, uh huh. We're getting that now, and I feel like the rest of the world catches up later. That may be a big ego. I fully think that. I definitely. I mean, I think that's just a thing in the spiritual community in general. We tend to like hit these waves a little quicker than other people. 
Um, so much of this I've been dealing with. I, I won't even lie, like for sure. Like even in the love relationship realm, like I mean, I my last like actual actual relationship was over a year ago. Now it ended, but then since then, there's this other person that's come into the picture, <laughs> and like like almost immediately. Well, but but it was the person I was with before that prior relationship that like it's a repeat. It, so. It was, it was a repeat. This person came. It was like nuts how it happened. I thought like that is like, I don't believe in twin flames at all. But like, it's that like intense, like crazy connection, you know? Um, and I just thought, I thought I would never know, know him again in my life. And I couldn't believe that like he's back in my life. And he still is. And he's actually <gasps> probably the only person that I have left in LA at this point. Like, wow. he's just been amazing. And he was so toxic and terrible and whatever. But like, I, and and he's still doing, you know, there, there are still these things that like were basically why I was like, I hate you. And I yelled at him in Santa Monica Boulevard and then like, like walked away <laughs> and then didn't know him for three years. Um, but he, people change. Um, and he did. And and in some ways he didn't like those triggers would still pop up. Right. But like, I'm noticing the way I handle it. I'm like so much more nonchalant. And I'm so like, you, who am I to tell you what to do? Like, you don't need to commit to me if you don't want to. I'm like fine for myself. Like I can nurture myself emotionally. Like it's like, I, I don't, yeah, it's nice to have other people there doing things like that. Right. But I think you have to come to that level of self, you know, radical self-acceptance. I hate these words, but it really is that like, because it, when you don't need anybody else, then you're just like, what a cherry on top to have anybody else care in any way you know right. and it really was once i got to that point with him that like now i'm just like it just seems like wait all of a sudden he's showing up more and more and more because i don't i need him less and less and less you know like ah. i don't and it's beautiful and it feels good okay that's what i'm thinking i'm thinking i'm holding on to old construct ideas which are not really the opposite of monogamy would be cheating so there's lying involved if there's not lying yeah, I think I'm putting the wrong uh, thing on it. But anyways, I, I'm talking too much about me on this podcast because I adore you. Folks, oh we're going to be no, right back. No, that's important. Okay, we're going to be right back, folks. Oh, man, I wish we had more time. Okay, hold on. Incoming transmission. Greetings, intergalactic campers. We are here to notify you of an auspicious cosmic event occurring at Starstruck Farm, Lebanon, Tennessee, August 17th to 20th of Earth Year 2023. Humans have labeled this event Hot alien summer camp and forces across the multiverse are confirm it to be an unparalleled community convergence phenomenon. Expect to experience sound baths, energetic exchanges, metaphysical vendors and practitioners, yoga, live music, Reiki, and comedy performances by Karen Rontowski and Ryan Singer. And most importantly, restful, enriching connection with your fellow aliens. Hot alien summer camp, where cosmic forces align for an unforgettable adventure. Go to HotAliensummerCamp.com to book your tickets and let the magic unfold. Transmission complete. Okay, so Ryan, I'm not going to talk. I'm going to let you go through whatever oh, yeah. notes you have. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> but I do appreciate you talking seriously. And it, really, I think it matters. Like, this is just like a microcosm of the macrocosm that's playing out here with the North Node in Aries, the sign of the individual. It's a personal focus sign, right? Like, our individual stories matter, you know? So that's like also why I didn't want to take the normal approach that I have been doing with you on, on these podcasts of like, look at all these like month by month by month, all these transits and everything. It's like, it's not that like, it's, I don't, I don't even want to relate much of this to historical events. Like we can, but who cares? We're all going to be experiencing this in such a very uniquely personal way awesome. that it doesn't really matter. So yeah, like, but, but I think the personal stories are what, are going to resonate just for what that's worth. So I'm like trying to be more open about my stuff, you know, to like help people feel more like uh, less alone, mm -hmm. I think. Um, but you're doing the same thing. Like, I love it. Like, don't, don't ever feel like you need to shy away from <laughs> talking your stuff, you know? Yeah. But that said, we can talk like some overall energies for sure. Cause there, there, are, there are still like big planetary changes that have recently transpired, but we're really just underway with them. Um, uh, I would say, like, one of the biggies, again, we talked about some of these in the the one six months ago, but really this is, like, now picking up pace, is Saturn in Pisces. 
Um, that that Saturn moving into Pisces March seventh. Um, it's going to be there for two and a half years. We're fresh into this. That to me is a lot of this like need to take responsibility for our emotional well being. Pisces is a sentimental sign. Um, I am again. I'm always basically going to come back to the North Node. Just like that's my overarching umbrella of like North Node and Aries. We're all trying to be the best version of ourselves we could mm-hmm. possibly be so every one of these transits must feed into this very personal kind of angle um so it's like what is your emotional stability like um pisces literally does not have a concept for boundaries it, it i view it like a mist but it literally rules the ocean so it's like it's just boundary less right but sat but saturn rules boundaries it mm-hmm. literally is structure it's physical matter so we're going to experience two things with this and i think it'll oscillate for everybody in you know their own personal ways but pisces being the ocean saturn literally rules like rocks right the ocean uh erodes rocks over time you know like the, that we're going to experience like are a softening of our rough edges, like where we're too rigid with ourselves or with other people emotionally. Where do we need to open up more, maybe be more vulnerable, softer? Um, that's going to happen. On the flip side, Pisces is going to be too loosey goosey and like unstructured, right? And it is a <laughs> spacey, like I'll just go with the flow, like I'll be, you know. Uh, four hours late for my meeting or whatever. Um, that's Pisces. And Saturn's like, uh-uh. It, that Saturn rules time. It is it's the task master, the time keeper. Um, it's going to try and firm things up where we need that. Um, mostly emotionally. Um, and again, because it's personal, it's like, look at your birth chart if you have it. Where's Pisces in your birth chart? What house does it rule? That's going to explain where these things are going to be happening. You're going to get a loosening up, but also a firming up, but in totally different ways. It's a super weird energy, I think, there. Um, and people could get a little, you know, depressive as well. I've kind of seen that. It's going to be a very self-loathing energy. Oh. So, like, if negative things are happening to you, you want to, like, notice that, you know? Um, it's not good to self-loathe, you know? Like, yeah. take responsibility for it. It doesn't It doesn't excuse that, like, somebody did something senseless to you or whatever. Or life can't... Life can just be hard. It doesn't mean you manifested every little thing that you have in your right. physical reality. But you can... What you get to do is take responsibility for yourself and what you choose to learn from it, how... Where you go from there, what you choose to accept in the future because of what you now know. You know, like, mm-hmm. there's so many ways we grow. So, that's I- going to teach us a lot of stuff. Yes, I feel like there's a, I feel like the United States builds in a victim mode into everything that we do. And, totally. and, and, and it's actually kind of disrespectful to real victims that have had things happen to them. But once we can turn off that, that's to me is almost like turning off the matrix and turning off the self loathing. It's like really breaking away from that by, by not being like ne- almost never, I, you know, this is, I'm talking too much. Okay, go ahead, Ryan. No, no, you're <laughs> saying such good things. You're saying such good things. Okay, I'll do this um, fast because we also yeah, have to be short tonight. So, anyways, the, oh, no, it's fine. the um, so I got a vision of a blue matrix, and it was like, this is your matrix, and don't pay attention to the other matrix. And then what would happen is, once I would get a negative looping thought, I would hear, now you're being pulled into the other matrix. Pull your back into your blue matrix where good things are happening. Does that make any sense? I'm seeing such a visual that's like such an interesting. I love your brain. Um, <laughs> I really do. But I mean, I, <laughs> um, it makes sense to me. I'm trying to like, I guess, like put it into context for me, but whatever. What, neither here nor there. I hope people relate with that. Like, that's a very. <laughs> I'm trying to, unique. I'm trying to animate a little cartoon and I'm terrible. I'm getting better at it, but literally, like, I think there's this freeway that, like, if you're in the lane of, like I see this with a lot of the young people. The young women are in the lane of I hate men. So they're ending up in the, it, you know who else is in that lane? Men that hate women. 
But you know what? If you go over to the other lane where there's uh, people that think they're always a victim, you know who else is in that lane? The people that are going to make them a victim. So you have to get into the positive of your own lane. But I I know this is a bigger thing, but I feel like the matrix is what I want to call it. I don't know if I have that word right. They want everybody on the freeway in their lane. And once you pull off the freeway and you're like, hey, look at it out here. It's kind of nice. I can do other things. But the but that freeway will appear whenever like like I had a bad set the other night and I felt like the big freeway appeared like see you're not good enough see you should have done better and it was just like whoa stay off that freeway I'm getting very confusing I'll make the animation and people no no <laughs> that all, that made perfect sense to me perfect sense to me and it's also striking a little bit of a chord with um kind of another big theme with this i think which is that concept of manifestation and it's funny because you had also just said that that you were like struggling to like manifest things for yourself right Mm -hmm. um like it's that's funny to me because pisces is the ultimate manifester like they they rule magic and miracles and they're just so tapped into like divine energy that if they just like think something they don't put too much weight on it ever And it just happens, you know, like Pisces people just are able to manifest so much better than anybody else. Um, Saturn coming into there, though, makes that very real for all of us. Like that Saturn literally brings things into our tangible reality. So manifestations will occur. So it's like, I think about the discipline that we give ourselves with Saturn. So I think like trying to be disciplined. Do you have like a manifestation routine, a practice? Like what is the spiritual discipline that you're following? Saturn's going to show us that over the next two and a half years, but it also rules long-term time. Um, So it's like nothing happens super quick. Well, it's kind of confusing. Nothing happens quick technically with Saturn, Um, mainly because it just wants you to like get it right, you know? And it knows Mm -hmm. like we often don't get things right on the first try, right? So that's just like a lesson Saturn teaches us. However, it is a, such a planet of integrity, which I kind of also relate to like purity, right? Like it's just like a pure strength, um, which that I have noticed. And it's so funny. Those like, those like sort of like strong thoughts that will happen, those intents or intentions you kind of like almost like, unconsciously shove out to the universe and then the way it immediately comes back to you. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't want to go like too in depth with like personal stories and whatever, but like I would just like the other day I, there, I thought about this random client um, that I hadn't, a total random client. <laughs> I was like, why is this person? Bobby? I was like, what are what that guy's up to? And that was it. And it was just this pure thought, you know, of like, I wonder what that guy's up to, you know, and then moved on about my day. But, as I was thinking this, I was thinking it because I was I- interviewing some or on someone else's podcast, actually. And we, we were talking about how there's this six-month time frame with manifestation that's based off the lunar cycle, blah, blah, blah. That's all you need to know there. That night, he emails me mm-hmm. and says, Ryan, you're never going to believe... I have not talked to him in six months. Six months! He emails me and says, six months ago, we had a reading, and I was so confused with everything you said, and I just re-listened to it. I can't even believe it. It's so crazy how, like, six months later, all of this, like, has come true. Like, all this is, like, manifested itself. And I was like, that is fucking nuts, because we literally... I thought about him in the midst of a conversation about how manifest, manifesting is a six month time frame, And I was like, where is that guy? And he emails me that day saying six months ago, we, t- I was just the weirdest thing. I'm sorry. I, it was just like, this was the strangest thing. And I it was like, think, it was just all pure thought. You yes. Know? Well, I think that's exactly right. As you're getting telepathic. Cause that happens all the time. I'm like, I wonder what happened to that client. And then they'll make an appointment. So I think that was telepathy. I have to, I'm going to add this. And I was only going to, I put this on my Patreon, but I'm going to tell people this. So I got a jar and I wrote on the bottom of it, bottom of it. I did a cleansing of it and I, uh, I wrote on the bottom of it. This is for beautiful, healthy skin to help me create collagen and have youthful mm. skin. And I put water in the jar and I program the water because I always forget to do this. I put the lid on the jar and I put it in the windowsill in the sun. And then I'll dr- when I see it, I'll open it up and I'll go, this is for really good skin and I'll drink it. And then I'll refill it and do it again. So that jar is only for that. And it's the only way I've had been able to keep with one thing. And not only have people been like, oh my God, your skin looks amazing. But the one thing I missed from L.A., 
which was hot yoga, just popped up. So my skin mm. is back. So if it helps folks, make a jar of water and just, I don't even have to have a schedule with it. Yes. I, I see that it just, it's a consistency. Yes. Water holds intention. Yes. It has memory. Like this is a very good thing about the element. And it, that is Saturn and Pisces. Pisces rules water. Like it's like the eldest water sign. Yes. You infuse your water. I'm in this thing too. Let me move into a, a different planetary transit. Okay. that's really big now. Um, uh, May 16th, Jupiter moved into Taurus, right? Taurus rules food. So I'm, and, and Jupiter is like a blessing. Literally it's a blessing. So I'm like now in this very, serious phase of like anything I put in my body. Yes. Taurus is the first earth sign. So it has a respect for the body. It realizes the body is its own. Um, so I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to bless everything that's going into my body and I'm going to give it a specific intention. I've already been doing that with Taurus rules, like luxury, right? It likes like good lotions and shit. Um, and I literally have this brand that I'm like obsessed with. They specialize in atmospheric scents. They're called what? Witch Baby Soap. Witch if Baby obsessed, Soap, or, okay. Which baby soap, I literally am obsessed. I've got like 30 different tubs of like different, like, wow. I know that sounds like a lot, but I'm not, it, like, they, they're very, you know, they're witchy. Um, and so I, I have like a very different intent and they all smell so stupid good. They, uh, they <laughs> have like new lines come out every like Thursday. So I'm like on there like every week. <laughs> Terrible. Um, but it's so good. And I have this intention and all of them. And it's just like those little, those little acts, right? And Saturn, first of all, this is cool. Saturn wants you to restrict. It doesn't want you to go crazy big. So with these intentions that you have, the manifestations you want, it is about the like little baby steps. Okay. What's repeatable, right? What's we want to scale. That's Jupiter in Taurus. We want to scale our physical reality and the peace that we have on Earth. <laughs> that is all Taurus stuff. Jupiter can expand that. Saturn, however, is saying, okay, but like, don't, don't like go crazy. You know, like don't, this is not a, Jupiter's a planet of leaps of faith. Taurus doesn't move quick. Pisces like, or Saturn definitely doesn't want you to move quick. So it's really about the baby step motions. Like how are we optimizing our little routines just making augmenting, augmenting. Like, that's kind of, like, the vibe right now. It isn't this, like, I'm going to suddenly change my life thing, you know? Ah, okay. Um, so I think that's important. Yes, because I thought the jar will remind me, because I couldn't remember. And it's so funny you said that. I just started making my own vanilla perfume with vanilla beans, which, oddly enough, takes about six months to make. Go freaking figure, right? <laughs> and and then, like, along with that six-month thing, like, a big part of this, too, if you, like, in six months, that's sort of, like, you can change your life. You really can by establishing these little habits, right? <laughs> well, and basically to build a habit, you need a lunar cycle, a month, a moon. So let the moon go through the entire lunar cycle, stick to a little change every day for 30 days. Then it becomes habit. Once habit is there like six months goes by your life has changed like and things snowball the weirdest things happen because not only are you getting better skin but because you got better skin like you know like somebody notices it and like asks you about it and then you start up a conversation and then they like find out about your comedy and then they're like oh my god i have a club mm -hmm. like you know like the weirdest little things snowball with these like very consistent good habit changes i but could really in six months yeah I love it. You know, it's so funny because I wasn't even focused on my skin and I started that. And I just ordered, everybody stay tuned because I I was like, I want one of those red light therapies. And then I was like, and I want it for free. And so I, I reached out to these companies and then one of them was the one that was rated better. I finally bought it. I'm waiting for it to come. But they have an affiliate program where like I could sell it if I like it that much. But I was like all these skin things. You're right. Like when I was focusing on my skin, all these things to make your skin better just came into my life. I love it. I love it. I love it. And and that's a good thing to be like focusing on right now. Like this is a, probably one of the sweetest things that we have going on um, for the whole, a whole year until May of next year. Jupiter stays in a sign for a whole year at a time. Taurus rules that element of like luxury. It loves, it rules the five senses. So it wants you to like, you know, be taking care of your skin and your body, but not just like, in the standard, like, regimented ways. Like, those are good, but, like, get a lotion that you like the smell of, you know? <laughs> like, get candles that you like the smell of. Like, enjoy this. We have, we are souls incarnated into a physical existence 
for a reason. So enjoy the physicality of life here. Like, why are why deprive yourself of it? Yes. And everybody, you know? I apologize at how short this is, but we were trying to figure out. I still haven't figured out this server, but doesn't Ryan sound great? I know you know he does. Um Ryan, this is wonderful. <laughs> Any closing remarks and then pump out your website and your uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. your uh, podcast and everything. Yes, I will be very quick with this. Seriously, it is July 22nd until September 3rd. Venus is going to be retrograde in Leo. This typically sucks, but it ultimately is going to teach you some self-love. You might have some moments of feeling a little worthless, unlovable or something. Don't get discouraged uh, because ultimately Venus in retrograde in Leo has this internalized process of, wait, I am worthy. I am lovable. And screw that person for making me feel that way, you know? <laughs> and then also it's one of those very, 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 very rare occasions in astrology where it's like, if that X comes back around, it could work. Like it could actually work. They might have changed Um Dead serious. So, and, and in general, it's not just X, like it, it, often with Venus retrograde. And frankly, that person I was telling you about, <laughs> like yeah. for me, wasn't this was the same exact situation for me. Um, so, and they're, it, they're just crazy for me. Um, but it could be a friend, it could be anybody. And you're kind of going to get an indicator with this one where, like, it could be a friend that visits town and, you know, they're like, I, are you, do you still live here? I haven't talked to you in years. I'm free today. You want to get coffee? And you might be like, what the hell? I have no desire to catch up with this friend, you know? Um, go. You have no idea what that is for. And it, whatever it is, it will, you will walk away feeling better about yourself. It could be mean that the relationship restarts. It could just mean that they have an apology for you and you feel better for it. And you're like, I'm so glad I'm not with them anymore. Like, you know, like whatever it is, you will feel good engaging with the people from the past July 22nd through September 3rd. It really is nice. Awesome. So that's, that's that. Okay. Um, um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Good. For everything. Go oh ahead. yeah. Sorry. I was just gonna say, my <laughs> website, uh, ryansastrology.com. Um, uh, my, my podcast is launched. Claire annoyance. By the time you're listening to this, Karen's episode is out. It is so freaking good. Um, it is so, <laughs> good i was so excited about it um and uh i have a candle line that's out by this point too oh. so go figure how very jupiter and taurus um it's uh in a partnership with somebody called 16 and vine so you can go to 16 and vine.com um it's a it's an elemental candle line so we <gasps> we've been working on it since june of last year um so i've been like consulting on like what to put in the candles related to the elements and whatever um but it is she's a small batch but she's making a lot more for this one and you know i think if there's enough demand we can probably get her to do a whole new line but her candles are literally the most luxurious incredibly scented candles i've ever had in my life they're so good. Um, and I'm also launching an astrology calendar with um, somebody called Uncommon Ground. Um, well, that's their n n name. His name's Eric. Anyway, but it's basically for if you're in business, you like to use astrology for business. It's basically going to be something where you can opt in. It's like a once a year kind of like fee, like a subscription thing. Um, still working on the pricing, but it's really going to be very accessible where it's just a calendar integration to put into whatever calendar you have. And um, we're basically uploading all these like little calendar notices to say like, don't book a meeting today or launch that project or whatever. So it's for a whole year in advance. Anytime you sign up, we'll be consistently uploading it and you'll have a whole year of astrology transits to help you in business. So more to come on that, but it'll oh. be out actually. Okay. You have to, well, out. first of all, I'd love to have you back on uh, when I always have you at the beginning of the year, but please come back on, even if it's just for a 20 minute segment to tell us about that. I would love to. Okay. I would love to actually. I would love all right, hold on one second after I hang up, Ryan. And everyone, uh, that's Ryan's astrology. Uh, everybody loves you. I love you. I'm so sorry this one was short. Everybody have a great day. Thanks to Mike at Uno Rising Media. We'll see you next week. Paranormal Karen. She's a spooky kind of queen. Paranormal Karen.